1. This was my first encounter that I recall with the paranormal. I was around 12 to 13 years old at the time. Back then I had a habit of visiting my grandfather every once in a while, and would stay with him for an overnight visit. My grandmother had passed away earlier and he lived alone in the house, so I thought my visits would give him some comfort. It turned out we soon grew a close bond to each other. I had an interest in the paranormal even back then, and boy did he have a lot of stories to tell. He said he would never lie about these sort of things, that they were true stories from him and from the people close to him. So I would visit him, we would play cards, and he would tell his stories. None of the stories really revolved around the house where he lived in, the house that he had built, but I always wished to get a glimpse of the paranormal at his place, the house in the middle of a forest. Maybe I will tell those stories of his sometime, but now is not the time for them. It's time for my experience at the house one winter night. But first you need to know briefly the layout of the house. When you arrive from the house entrance room, there is a main kitchen area. There is a stove here which is heated by firewood. It gives heat to the rest of the house. There is a fireplace only heated during the coldest of days at the living room next to the kitchen. Finally, next to the living room is an alcove with a bed. The alcove gives a partial view to the living room and the kitchen entrance. My grandfather would let me sleep at his bed in the alcove during the nights. He would sleep at the living room sofa. It was a winter night and I was sleeping at the alcove, when I suddenly woke up to an unusual sound. It was only heard for a few seconds, but it made light and hollow wooden thumbs, quickening towards the end. Like when someone drops a light wooden item on the floor, for example a large wood pencil or even a small flute. The sound stopped and I raised myself to a sitting position in order to better see the living room. I watched as a black silhouette figure walked from the kitchen entrance into the living room. It was clearly an adult, but had a weird outline, sort of blurry or foggy. Naturally, I thought it was my grandfather who had put some firewood into the stove, as it was heated even during the night, and was about to return back to sleep to the living room. I returned to lay down to my bed. That's when I heard it, the snoring of my grandfather. He was asleep the whole time. My heart jumped. In that case, what was the figure? Was it a ghost? A burglar? It couldn't be the latter. The entrance was locked with multiple doors. And I didn't hear any footsteps. Anxiously, I returned to sleep. I searched the floor in the morning for any unusual items, but found nothing. I also asked my grandfather, but he hadn't seen or heard anything. During my whole life after the experience, I had thought it was simply a hypnagogic hallucination, my sleepy eye seeing things that weren't there. The weird sound was just a coincidence. Still just a few months ago, I decided to share my experience with my uncle, who had grown up in that very house. I wanted to hear his opinion of my experience, as he's a very open fellow. He didn't really see anything remarkable about it at first. But after some minutes, he told me to my shock, you know, I've seen it too. Seen what? That thing. Although it was much smaller back then. It turned out that back when he had been a boy, around the same age as me, 12 years old, he had been helping his mother, who in turn was my grandmother, at the kitchen. He had happened to glance towards the living room and saw a small black silhouette of a human walking towards the living room. It disappeared under the living room table. Even my grandmother saw it and screamed in shock, what was that? Did you see it too? My uncle's experience really shocked my beliefs. Could it be that I had really seen something back then? If so, what did my uncle see in turn? What was it? The same entity or a different one? And why did it show itself at the living room precisely? Could it be that we all three had seen a simple hallucination? I may never know. But I love how I now have my own ghost story to tell, just like my grandfather. 2. At first I should introduce myself. My name is Julia. My age isn't important. All you gotta know is that I'm not an adult yet. And above all I'd like to apologize for any grammar mistakes and stuff, but I'm not from an English speaking country. Actually I'm from the Czech Republic. And I've been learning to speak English for like 
Seven years? I don't know. Anyway, I should finally start with this story. I was like seven years old when I started dancing hip-hop freestyle. I'm done with it, though. And I actually joined a group that was having performances and stuff like this. When I was eight, my parents decided to send me to a summer camp with this dancing group. I really didn't want to go there, but what could I do? So during July, I packed my things and went to this summer camp. Everything was fine. All my roommates were nice, we were dancing every day, sometimes going swimming, etc. But the third day we were there, something quite creepy happened. At first, I should tell you how the room looked like. So you'll get a better image of what I'm talking about. When you stepped in, there were two doors to your right, one leading to the restroom and the other to the toilet. They were separate. There was a closet with a door next to it and a mirror on your left. The door next to the closet led to the bedroom. Now, when you know how it looked, I should continue the story. We were all in our room, all chilling after dancing class, when we heard some weird noises. We didn't pay attention and continued to talk about how we can't wait to go swimming. But then, we heard some... drubbing? It was like when you close the door really fast. It was repeating again and again, dum, 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 dum. All of us in the room were like 8, 9 or 10 years old. I think there was actually one 13 year old girl, but I'm not sure though. So we were all scared as fuck. Because the older girls told us a story about the ghost the other day. We were little and naive. Finally, after like 5 minutes, my friend decided to go check it. So she stepped out the door and looked left. Then, she quickly returned. We asked her what was it she said that the closet door was closing and opening over and over again. We were all freaked out. One kid even started crying. We were sitting there for like 10 minutes because to exit the room, we had to go around the closet. And we didn't want to do that. Well, after a while, our dance teacher came in. The drubbing had already stopped. She asked us, why do we look so scared? So we told her. She said that it doesn't make sense because she would hear that. I don't know if it was just our imagination or if there really was some sort of demon or a ghost in the closet. It really freaked my childish mind out. And to this day, I'm not comfortable around closets and stuff. 3. Today, St. Coletta's in Jefferson, Wisconsin is a residential assisted living community for those with developmental and other issues. It is a great establishment that does a lot of good for the community and the individuals involved. I would like to stress that, before I get into my story about the old St. Coletta's, which has a much different history. Way back when the original St. Coletta's opened sometime in 1904. At this time, it was called St. Coletta's School for Backwards Youth. As most of you know, there was not much knowledge and basically zero regulation and protection for special ed or the disabled before 1975. St. Coletta's in its early days was a boarding school for those who were mentally ill, mentally handicapped, physically disabled, and anything else at the time that would be deemed crazy. The original St. Coletta's campus has been abandoned and overgrown for a couple of decades now, I believe. Due to the abandoned aesthetic and history of the place, many, many paranormal and haunted stories of the campus have floated around south-central Wisconsin. Rosemary Kennedy was housed at the original St. Coletta's campus. The rumor is that after her lobotomy, they hid her in one of the dorms here as a cover-up. Anyway, I play in a metal band in the area, and we were somehow able to have our management get us a permit to film a music video on the haunted campus despite the dozens of no trespassing signs and strict fines for entering. We were welcomed by the owner of the property, an older, quiet man, who seemed disinterested in the place, maybe a little unsettled. Obviously, we asked him stories about paranormal activity. He was full of them. He talked of removing art from the walls of the school building and putting them in his home, causing his cats to freak out and stuff to fall off shelves randomly all of which stopped when he returned to painting. He talked of the scratches on the wall, which are believed to be perfectly healthy people being kept in solitary, slowly losing their sanity and scratching at the walls. After about 30 minutes of a quick tour and stories, the man left and we were left alone. 
just the four members of the band and the videographer. We set up in the theatre, a perfectly theatrical background for a creepy metal video. We filmed, not much happened. We heard a banging noise a few times. Creepy, but nothing beyond that. After hours of filming and getting the perfect shots, we broke everything down and decided to explore on our own. The first thing we checked out was the church. The vocalist of my band stole a pamphlet from the 1970s, which he returned that same day after simply repeating, I had to. It was weird. He didn't seem like himself, but after returning the pamphlet, he seemed okay. Next was the school building, four stories, with each one seemingly more creepy. First floor was cool. That's where the theatre and main rooms were. Everything was run down, abandoned, stained and creepy. Photographer's paradise, really. Second floor was a little more creepy. A lot of writing on the chalkboards, we assumed they were fake and put there by kids who had successfully broken in. But seeing choppy chalk writing of they left me here was eerie nonetheless. Third floor is where we hit our breaking point. Keep in mind we have been slowly creeping through everything at this point, scared of what we might see around the corner. As we walked down the hallway along the mouldy, rusted lockers, we heard something. A fuzzy type of noise. As all the band stopped and listened, a slight hum came with it. Looking down the hallway, we noticed the noise was coming from the bathroom. Oh boy, is the only thing that was said. As we crept towards the bathroom, we noticed a bit of steam coming out of the shower. All anyone could do is look at each other with wide eyes. I peeked my head around the corner. A shower head was definitely on. And then the slight hum came back, like someone casually singing to themselves in the shower. It was a few seconds in listening to the humming noise. While pressed against the wall with our hearts pounding, that we realized something. The old property owner mentioned that the water and electricity has been shut off here since the 90s. We ran. Not only down the creaky stairs to the first floor, but out the main doors to the band van. Where we packed things up and got the hell out of there. We still have no explanation. The property owner didn't bother responding when we told him about it. The whole place is intriguing for sure. And I am 100% sure that there is paranormal activity to be found there on the regular. 4. My own experience happened late last year, 2016, in Picton Tunnels, New South Wales. Picton, just an easy one to one and a half hour drive out of Sydney. I went there with my missus end of last year. I have been there three times with a group of friends, but going with just her, we lost that feeling of security. You've got two options of getting in, either under the gate, or there's a hole in the fence to the left of the gate. We got there, just the two of us, and were so fearful of going in by ourselves. It was a trek, so we didn't want to just turn around and go home, so we called a friend and put them on the phone while we went in. This gave us a false sense of security. We walked to the middle of the 100 meterish length tunnel, and stood there. The ground is laid with small stones, every step echoes, and the hollowness of the tunnel is so haunting itself. We stood there for about 10 minutes, when we started to hear what sounded like a gust of wind start to build up from the end of the tunnel toward the mushroom fields. We turned our attention to that end, which was pitch black. Suddenly, what I could only describe as a fog of light, as if the air itself was lit up and illuminated, started coming straight down the tunnel towards us in the middle. We started sprinting and screaming for our dear lives as we hurled ourselves out of the tunnel the way we came in. As we were running, the air passed us, and the light going straight through us and out the other side of the tunnel, fading into pitch black. We reached the outside, catching our breath completely shaken. The friend on the phone was like, what the hell was that? We had no idea how to even explain it. We caught our breath, and my girl turns to me and says, I want to go back in. I looked at her like, are you crazy? But being the white people in any horror movie ever... We turned ourselves around and walked straight back into the tunnel, except this time only going about 10 to 15 meters in. 
We're both back to back, each of us facing the ends of the tunnel. We're completely on edge. I'm using my flashlight on my iPhone, shining one way up the tunnel, then shining the other way up the tunnel, constantly checking. She's holding her phone in her hand, still updating her friend what's happening. Another five minutes passes and her phone loses all reception. We had full bars before this. My phone still had all its reception on the same network. The call ends. We both look at each other, confused and silent. We hear these steps from behind us, the stones crunching, as if someone was approaching from down the tunnel. I'm shining my flashlight, but there's nothing. The sound of the stones crunching as its steps get louder and louder. As it approaches. I'm literally tracing the sound with my eyes, as it sounds like it's approaching merely meters away from me. We're frozen in fear. We couldn't stand any longer, and we ran straight back out, not turning back behind us. We're quietly walking back up the driveway that leads to the tunnel, and a set of headlights turns into the driveway. We're like, shit. The red and blue sirens come on. A single officer steps out, asks us why we are here. We told the officer we were traveling, passed and saw the gate open, so we stopped to check it out. On this particular night, the front gate at the top of the driveway was open. It usually, and in the past times I had went, it never was. He explained to us that we were trespassing, he took our names and postcodes, and handed us a warning. He then asked, did you see her? We played dumb. Who? He replies, Emily. If you do go, be wary, the police too regularly patrol. After we left the police officer, we watched as he drove his car right through the tunnel, and then back again. The neighbors will also call the police if they hear any intruders. 5. So me and my brother and family went camping two or three weeks ago. We were in a tiny Bible camp, my family was renting the camp and everything, and we came late, so we got the damn small cabins all the way at the end of the camp. But we had a neighbor, so it wasn't that bad. The last night we stayed there, me and all my cousins were playing hide and seek in the dark. They're all much younger than me, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. It was very dark out, so we all wore glow sticks. There were seven or eight of us, so we all got a different color. Mine was magenta, pinky, purple, or something of that sort. This is relevant. My brother, who was it, found everyone except me. I was near my cabin in the bushes, the whole time. I covered my magenta glow stick with my sleeve and laughed as they gave up. But I didn't. It got creepy. I heard sounds in the building where the showers were, but they don't work so no one uses them. I eventually held out my glow stick and stood up so the kids saw me. My brother and my cousin, Amelia, were yelling at me like, we already saw you. I was so confused because they never even came near me. Yeah, you ran into the mess hall, which is way farther down on the other side. I never moved from the bushes, so I was just defending myself. Then my brother, who seemed disgusted, looked at my wrist and said these chilling words. Did you get a different glow stick? I thought yours was orange. Then he looked at my shirt and said, Did you change your white shirt? I was so confused. Now, we eventually forgot about this because who cares, right? The next day we were going to leave at night to go back to our home, which was some 14 hours away in another province and state. I had heat stroke and was sick and stayed inside my cabin in my bunk, sleeping almost all day. And if I wasn't sleeping, I was throwing up. It was awful. But apparently everyone was looking for me. And when my brother came into the cabin, he gave me a terrifying expression, like he had seen a ghost, or maybe he had. He said everyone was down by the campfire and in the woods on the other damn side of the camp looking for me. I said I've been in here all day. He told me that he was sure I was over there. Everyone saw me and my orange glow stick wearing white dive into the bushes and running from my cousins. But I was in the cabin all day. My mom even knew, but my brother never asked her where I was, apparently, because she was in the mess hall. And he didn't want to walk all the way to the mess hall. But he was so shook because he saw me, as did everyone else. 
and then he saw my arm and saw that I had a pink coloured glow stick again, that my cousin Jackson, who's three years old, was orange. So who was it? Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Paranormal Stories, episode 63. Thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Well, this has been a difficult recording session. I think neighbours are having a party nearby. So I'm kind of in between takes yelling, shut up. You know, but I don't want to yell too loud because I don't want them to actually hear me and come knock on the door, in which case that would lead to a confrontation. Okay, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.